down a pretty big rabbit hole of unknown media entities. Who fucking follows Sunkiss? Yeah, that's that's like problem A that I'm dealing with. But now fifty-seven thousand people do. That's true. I, I bet <laughs> they're all at employees, least, though. No, man. I think 25,000 of those are actually probably people who, like, opened a banana and it was a little, like, black. And they're like, what the fuck, Sunkiss? <laughs> <laughs> My banana's black. And then they're going to be, okay, this is Jenny from Sunkiss. Can you uh, DM me your address? We'll send you a new banana. Jenny from Sunkiss, <laughs> though, is not actually from Sunkiss. She's from a social media conglomerate company called Percolate that oh, Sunkiss damn. uses to tweet. Shit. And they're hiring. So if we're all looking for an alternate Wait. route once this podcast fizzles out. I follow. You think they padded their numbers at Sunkist? Is that oh, the point? Probably. Look, if I was the CEO of Sunkist, I would buy Twitter followers. I I would do it. That's bold. I wouldn't even feel bad. They're verified, but I'm not. Look, man, don't bring me back into this shit again. I had a long-standing feud with a certain Twitter handle that had something to do with crusts. And uh, <laughs> I, I had it. more followers than them. They were verified uh, long Don't before bring me. up bad blood, man. Come well, on. that's if you're a corporation, you just the get bad verified. Blood man. Now. Yeah. Bullshit. Dude, the yeah, fucking so corporate. If you are an associate if editor, if you're an associate editor for like a, a newspaper that services 1,500 people in Dade County, Wyoming, you are verified on Twitter. If you Dade have 400 County followers, in Florida, bear. there's a Dade County, Wyoming. There could be more than one Dade County. Dade County is a very popular name for a county. Oh, Dade County, there is no Dade County, Wyoming bear. Come on, man. God damn. Why do you gotta why you gotta harsh my mellow like that? Dade County. Why can't Florida? you just let Dade County, Wyoming be a thing? Miami Dade County was very important in the two thousand presidential election. How do you know more about the US than we do? How do you know it's Dade about County, Dade County, dog? How do you know about Dade County? I didn't even know about County. Dade County when I said it out loud. I didn't know where that reference came from. It was just a part of my brain that I could access. <clears throat> you know who the uh, second biggest employer in Dade County is? Is it going to oh. be Sunkist? I wish, man. That would be really cool. <laughs> it's actually Baptist <laughs> Health, South Florida. All right. Just in case you're curious. Yeah. Uh, well, you said that like it meant something. <laughs> Yeah, I was really I was, hoping that would connect to our conversation do I need, somehow. Do I need to repeat what I said? Do you know who the third biggest employee in uh, <laughs> You Dade said County second. Is? This is all going completely off the rails. <laughs> no, yeah, back to Sunkist. <laughs> back to the important conversation we were having about Sunkist. No, this is new pizza place that opened up down the street, mm -hmm. and they have 12 followers. I'm one of them, and I'm hoping they notice and sponsor me with free pizza. You've got to be like the forever. biggest Twitter user I there. Think, I they think have it is. They, they follow a very random assortment of people, including um, Barack Obama, Jimmy Fallon, Anderson Koopa, 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 <laughs> Koopa, <laughs> Koopa, Ellen DeGeneres, Taylor Swift. They followed Taylor Swift. This is That's just weird. like the 45-year-old Twitter starter pack. It's like, yeah, right. it's Twitter, it's like, here's who you're following to start with. No, I'm this gonna, they, they have celebrities can I think of. I'm going to retweet. <laughs> I'm going to retweet one of their tweets right now. I mean, they're pretty good at their marketing. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Well, right now you're giving them a pretty big PR bump just by mentioning them and then talking about how you tweeted them. That's true. I haven't tweeted oh, them. I follow oh. them. That so is, when you, that's, next that's time you good, right? In, that's, that's some edgy shit. Next time you walk in, show them the retweet, and then be like, all right, I want my pizza. <laughs> Friend. No, I'm looking at this pizza. I think it looks pretty good. But what's up with this broccoli pizza? Oh, yeah, right? I like, well, I like broccoli on my pizza That's sometimes. That's the broccoli but not often. pizza. Not yeah. often. <laughs> Friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, Pyforverza. Pyforverza. <laughs> Then they got this know. one. The rumor that the rumor that our pizza cures allergies has not been disproven. Hashtag the more that's, you know. That's a little shady to say. Watch out. Watch out. It's not been disproven. They're they're getting started on Twitter, man. And they they've got the, they're gonna the find snarky their way. tweets. Yeah. My diet you know, has me avoiding channels, all fried foods, which is great. Some of the channels pizza they follow. Baked. Why do they follow Scotland Food and Drink? I don't know. Why do they know. follow the official <laughs> South Florida Sun Sentinel newspaper account covering Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Palm Beach, Broward, and Dade no! County. County? No way! Dade County. We did it! Oh, man. Full circle. If you just talk long enough, eventually you'll get back to where you started. Welcome to the most fucking convoluted intro to a roundtable podcast we've probably ever had. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been working really hard on bringing this episode in. Honestly, yeah. we have. It's been so probably the most difficult thing we've ever had to do, but we Put did it. Time. 
It's finally done. And Nick is back. Hi, everybody. I went to Dublin, and now I'm here again. It was fantastic. You Wh where would you rather be right now? Went all the way to Dublin. I, now we Dublin, here. but on Dublin, Skype with it? you guys. Oh, Can I say that? okay, yeah, you cop. I did. I did honestly miss you guys, and I missed being on the show last week. We missed you too. It turned out to be a terrible show without you. No, so I we're really, really liked glad you're it. I listened to it. it was, <laughs> I had the opportunity there to be an external viewer, listener for once, and you put hmm? on a very good show. Well, I enjoyed thank it. you. That is nice. You're of very you. welcome. I needed that reinforcement Mr. Taffy. today. <laughs> We've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about today. First of all, we need Nick to tell us his um, his ideal Half-Life 3 launch scenario because yeah. he never got the chance to do that last time. All right, so I thought about it a little bit. You guys had kind of the whole broad spectrum of all the directions you took. I'm going to go in sort of the same direction that Ryan did, which is like uneventful, no PR. In fact, kind of scrap all of the weird shit they were doing. Just like release the game like a normal game because I think they've pigeonholed themselves now. Uh, Half-Life 1 succeeded because of interesting narrative and presentation it went in a direction nobody expected half-life 2 succeeded because it had revolutionary physics effects and new graphics effects that uh, worked well with new graphics cards and such and half-life 3 we don't know if it has a gimmick so the best it can do is be a well done first person shooter narrative element um, i personally didn't find the story to be that great in half-life really yeah that was one of my favorite parts of the whole game i had a big long argument with rob about this actually we oh, went on for yeah. about an hour that and... that sounds like something yeah. that would go on for about an hour <laughs> you guys are it, really good at having like in-depth conversations Batman, we do half-life we yeah. do spider-man like any superhero stuff we'll argue uh but no i just i didn't find it to be the best personally but i'm still gonna play it of course yeah. half-life absolutely all right well there you go there's nick's half-life 3 release uh today though we are, uh, we're going to talk about Overkill. We're going to talk about Overkill. We know this has been brewing for a little while. Not the PS1 game. No, yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about the PlayStation 1 release Overkill. Project Overkill. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Overkill is the developer of Payday 2. And uh, now we have a little bit more information about this entire ordeal, the fiasco that has been unfolding, uh, as a result of an AMA session that the Overkill developer or development team, I think it might have just been one guy actually trying to handle the PR overload. Uh, Everybody but... else is too busy counting the cash. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Why don't you give uh, them a rundown as to why, what what happened before we talk about the AMA? Yeah, well, I think we'll... I'm, I'm, I'm giving so the... Bullets. Let me do the rundown of the show, and yeah. then oh, we'll, we'll do the rundown of the shit. topic, right? Okay. Uh, I'm going to close this tab I have open for Miami-Dade County real quick. <laughs> and uh, then <laughs> YouTube Red is the next big topic obviously impacts all of us heavily it's the new paid subscription platform for youtube that is site-wide and not necessarily something like a twitch subscription for example that only applies to a certain channel uh, a few little news stories here and there in the gaming sphere as well that we just want to touch on briefly for example uh the uh, no man's sky release date has been set it's going to be june of next year so if you're interested in that there you go that's the entire story uh and uh something i want to talk about Right now, actually, that's, there's a uh, small news story about as well, that the PlayStation Vita is no longer really getting first-party support dead, for the Jim. platform. It's dead. It's gone. It's long gone. There's still third-party releases coming out, and there's still third-party developers that are working on stuff for the Vita all the time, but as far as Sony is concerned, they are not really looking at it as one of their big uh, platforms anymore. So... I know all three of you guys have a 3DS, and I know, uh, well, someone has a Vita, right? I, I have a Vita. Nick has I a Vita. I also have a Vita. Okay. No. So, I had a Vita 2 a little while ago. I got rid of it, and I, I am probably just kind of the staple case for Vita consumers. I bought it thinking that I would enjoy it. It turns out I don't really play it that much, so I sold it, and now it's not a part of my life. But I think I am filling that void of the handheld gaming of that space now with things that work a lot better for me in that regard. I've got like, you know, I have a laptop, so obviously I'm kind of, you know, cheating myself out of the comparison to a Vita on the plane or something like that because we have the laptop, which can give us most things we want to play anyway. And then I've got a phone that can now handle things like freaking Final Fantasy VII, which is ridiculous. <laughs> so... My question, I guess, I mean, it's a pretty easy, easy question to get around to, but it kind of applies in more of a general sense to what you guys think Sony, Microsoft, and even Nintendo are doing with their handheld consoles moving forward. 
what is the lifespan of these consoles now and do they even need to really kind of focus on them i mean the 3ds is without a doubt doing phenomenally well mm -hmm. uh, i think nintendo's always kind of dominated that space and i think it's because of their domination it's really hard for anybody else to crack into it typically they're cheaper they have a wider range uh variation of games um I just think 3D, I, 3DS just is just mostly Nintendo handhelds are just really, really good. And Wait, are we Sony, still talking about bullet points, or are we? I are think we talking about why? I think we finished the bullet points. We finished the bullet points. Yeah, we finished the bullet points. I led, I led naturally into a conversation well, about. And there will be an ass roundtable, and then Nick's for games <laughs> at the end. Done. In what world is the last bullet point the first point you talk about? In the you past gotta, three episodes, I'll have you know. Nah, dog. It's that's, been a pattern I've established. Class, if you're like today, I'm going to be talking about. The perils of Miami Dade County, uh, whether or not Yoda is the dopest <laughs> Star Wars character, then you gotta launch into the first point in your first paragraph in the middle section. Mm, look, man, you stay in public speaking 1010 in your freshman year. That as is long a as you want to. Class, that is not a And I'm excited class. to take it. <laughs> 3DS is better at the end. 3DS obviously is doing quite well. The Vita. The Vita does not really have that kind of allure, I guess. The Vita is just more of a, I don't want to call it a traditional, but, you know, like, just sort of a run-of-the-mill handheld console. Right? All right, well, I just went on a trip, and I just flew for, like, nine hours. Perfect! So I'm the prime example of who would be doing something <laughs> with this. So I had to actually make this decision as I was packing to leave. I have a 3DS, I have a Vita, I have a phone, and I have mm -hmm. a laptop. So that's like a lot of electronics. I don't want to take all of those with me, obviously. I'm obviously taking my phone, because reasons. You need the phone. Yep. And then I'm not taking the laptops. I just didn't want to deal with the hassle of getting it through customs and security and all that shit. Uh, and didn't want to have to put it in a bin, laptop. man. Jeez, that would be I didn't terrible. want to have to carry it around, lug it around shit either. Uh, right. It's, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> Uh, so I ended up just picking my Vita. That was the one that I took with me. And I don't have very many games for my 3DS. I have quite a few games for my Vita now. And I went and splurged and got the biggest uh, memory card for it. So I've been filling it up with indie games like crazy. And uh, I actually went and played through most of Super Meat Boy again, like through all the hard mode stuff while I was on the plane. Did a bunch of Isaac runs, played some Spelunky. Like, it's, it's a great little link in because... I have PS Plus, so it keeps giving me all these mm. free games that I load on there, and I don't have to really pay anything for them. So I just invested in the memory card and the system, and I keep getting games. I don't get that on the 3DS. What do you think? That's a good point. I I mean, got to be fair, too. With PlayStation Plus, you're not just getting games. You are paying the monthly subscription fee to... Well, I bought it for the price for the year. It was actually okay, discounted, but... so it was like 50 bucks for a year or something. Right. Uh, the Vita is also my go-to, like, play the same stuff I play on PC, but on an airplane machine. Yeah, exactly. And for that, I like it. Um, I don't use it very often unless I'm flying, but uh, I I don't use my 3DS at all, basically, except for yeah. Monster Hunter. So, I mean, I just, I, I kind of feel like I just am not that interested in handhelds in general most of the time now. I, I like to imagine that even though the four of us, you know, we're, we are kind of similar as far as you know like actual demographic data is concerned yeah, almost every single cross section yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we have to we have to acknowledge that when we're talking about anything that you know sort of requires a balanced approach and different sorts mm -hmm. of lifestyles and opinions to hopefully be able to get a thorough idea of what the what the audience is thinking as far as these products are concerned but yeah we we are all sort of the same as far as handhelds go we all sort of have the same interests. We have the same uh, like opportunities to use these consoles, uh, you know, between the four of us. So we're we're not really going to have a very diverse approach to this. I I'm wondering who really is the big target audience for handheld consoles. Kids, kids, kids. right? It's got to well, be kids. In America, kids, because they're going to be traveling with their you're being in the car, going on errands and stuff. But handhelds are huge in Japan. And I'm assuming pretty big in, in just most modern cities because there's a lot of public transportation. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of the market is because they're going to be on trains or buses or whatever a lot of the time. And people who want to play video games, that's what they're going to have. Mm -hmm. It's bigger in Japan because Japan is very densely packed for the most part. Um, but here in the U.S., I'd say kids is probably the target demographic. And if parents are going to buy it, they're going to buy the cheaper system most of the time, which when they launched, the 3DS was $50 cheaper. Mm -hmm. 
Um, 3DS is and, just, you know, it's an easier sell for parents, too. For and the most and there's a lot, lot more kid-friendly games on the 3DS mm-hmm. than there are on the Vita. The Vita is sort of the, the handheld targeted more to an older audience, I would imagine, then, right? The I Vita is so. targeted at people that write for Polygon, whereas the 3DS <laughs> is targeted at people that have kids <laughs> that write at Polygon. Is that the kids I, write I, at fair? Polygon? The kids write yeah. at Polygon, yeah. Well, I mean, when I think about stuff that's big on the Vita, that isn't like an indie game ported from the PC. It's a pretty short list. There's like Gravity Rush, and then that uh, oh, Tearaway, admittedly, mm-hmm. and then um, the Killzone game, which I heard is okay. And then once we get beyond that, I'm kind of like, I don't really, I don't know. Yeah, you know, like it's. Mm-hmm. I think it's got such a niche audience because it's kind of like it's a spelunky machine. And like <laughs> Sony has done a great job of actually putting stuff like cross play, uh, but I don't think people care about that. Like the thing with like like remote play and cross play is that I never really, it's kind of like the Steam um, big picture mode yeah. and like, uh, and like intra network sharing basically. Like I did use um, the, the cross play, uh, not cross play, whatever, remote play with the Vita. And I went to like the other room and I could not play it because it was just like yeah. way too laggy. It's, and I was like, a bit awkward. And yeah. the controls don't always map perfectly either, which is very frustrating for something like Diablo 3, which should be perfect because there isn't mm. like a good version of that for handheld. And yet some of the buttons are still a bit iffy because you have to use the back panels for stuff. Oh, yeah. And like, back panels are just, I don't know. With, with remote play, is like literally I could be sitting on my couch playing the game, but if I go to the toilet, it doesn't work. So where is the functionality here for me? Like, where is the ideal space to do this? Yeah, where, where am I going to be that's far enough away from my couch that I'm like, I don't want to go sit on my couch, but still close <laughs> enough to my wireless router that it'll actually work. It has to be hit. like a really big perk for you to say, yeah. I don't want to have to go sit on my couch exactly. to do this. <laughs> the way they do it in like, I remember the trailers for like the, the remote play stuff would have like MLB the show mm. and then the person would be playing at home and then they'd be like, shit, I'm late for work. And they'd get on the subway with their Vita and play it, and I'm just like, that's dishonest. That's not. Like, <laughs> you're like underground and like right. miles away from your PS4. That's never gonna work. Yeah. Like, right. it, I mean, at the time, I was like, that's amazing. And then you realize, oh, not really, because they just made it up. It just you can set up a, like that. a data account, right? With that goes through your Vita. I understand the subway thing isn't a thing, but if you were above ground, ideally, you would be able to actually make a network with your home account if you have access to some sort of data. Is that true? I believe that's a thing. It sounds logical. I hope it's true. <laughs> I think that's a thing, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But I haven't done it. The Vita... Yeah. W- would you guys agree the Vita is like the adult hand- handheld console, basically? Sort of, yeah. Yeah, uh, Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I much. love my 3DS, though. And, like, I play my 3DS probably two or three times a week. So the real question now is, is Mathis an adult? <laughs> I think we've known the answer is no for quite some time, though. It's true. <laughs> I don't know. Vita just I just remember a couple of years ago at E3, like the whole Sony conference was them begging you to buy a Vita. They're like, look at all the mm. cool things the Vita now does. And I'm like, mm, still don't care. Right, and of course this year now we have seen basically nothing as far as the handheld market is concerned. The entire focus the the focus was really good this year. I really enjoyed where the big three were headed. Like yeah. where their heads were as far as what people want. Seemed to be a lot less focus on the gimmicks and a lot more focus on you know, solid product offerings. So that kind of also meant there's not a lot of time devoted to the handheld marketplace. Is it, I don't know, it, it probably hasn't gotten any smaller, right? It probably no. hasn't died off in any noticeable fashion. There's just nothing for, nothing new for them to be pushing. Mm-hmm. The 3DS is there. It isn't going anywhere. The games are coming out for it. And Sony's like, mm, we're not going to be able to do anything and backed out. So then the final way in here would be whether or not it's that big of a deal that Sony is withholding first party support for the Vita. So it's just around, not profitable for them. Just not profitable. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Not I really see care. things saying they're releasing new colors, so I don't think they're just completely stopping dis- or discontinuing it entirely. So that's good. Yeah. And uh, as a late adopter, I'm glad that they're still putting something into it. I missed the first three or so years of its existence. Mm. I I don't know. I, I kind of like I, I can't care yeah. about it. I literally the only stuff on Vita I play is stuff that I already play on PC, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's it's like a cool opportunity to take it on the go. 
But at the same time, if they were like, hey, we're just continuing Vita support for everything tomorrow, I would be like, well, you're not taking Spelunky off of my Vita. Mm -hmm. You're not taking, like, Isaac off of my Vita, so it doesn't really bother me. Um, I I don't think I've ever played anything except for indie games on the Vita. So maybe I haven't given it a fair shake, but... uh... No, you're not entirely off on that. I don't think I hardly have either. I have about maybe four or five cartridges that I own with it, and one of them is, like, Persona 4 Golden... Uh, which is yeah. great. I mean, it's a great game, but I haven't really spent a lot of time on it. And granted, when I do, I'll probably be spending a ton of time on it. Uh, but it's just been on the back burner, and there aren't a lot of cartridges that I want to buy for it. It's just kind of mostly about PSN, and the fact that those things are integrated and having a new flow of each month, I get a couple more games that some of them I want, some of them I don't want, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Right on. All right. Let's talk about something a lot more depressing. You want to I do can't that? Wait. Okay. <laughs> the fact that I'm not on the Overwatch beta because that really upsetting me. Are you still just refreshing the email every, inbox? Every like the entire minutes. show. Yeah. Like, He's not please. unboxing magic cards. Well, nope. to distract not you from right now, that. Anyway. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> no one said magic. No, oh, I must have been uh, confused. Yeah, you were. So the magic it. circle. It's different. Yeah, Mathis, I want you to describe to me uh, the the plight of Overkill for the last couple weeks. No, oh, I don't want to talk about it. I want, I want you to talk about it. I want you to be impassioned about it, too. Oh, oh God. Just let me bring it up. and like, <laughs> Let me just describe it in a way that's not convoluted. Yeah. And I'll just impassioned see it. Yeah, already. Yeah. So impassioned. Mm-hmm. So it, just, it bothers me because it's a good... It, well, I enjoyed my... I know you know some people are like, man, it's all right. But like, I enjoyed my payday time. Two. Yeah. Payday 2. Payday 2, correct. Payday two. My time with the game when it came out. thought it was an interesting take on the whole co-op Left 4 Dead style game. Um, oh, they, they took it down. Motherfucker. What did they take down? They took down the AMA. I don't see it anymore. What? And they took down the rundown of. Oh, oh man. Well, of I, I still have the cached version, so we still All got right. that at least. But That's good. Yeah. So, from. Okay. And I mean, correct me if I butcher any particular details, which I'm sure I will. Basically, Payday 2 has been a $20 game for a while with like over $100 worth of DLC that you can opt into if you so choose. Um, and recently, they were they just introduced an update called the Black Market and like Crime Wave Weekend. Crime, crime Fest, Wave, I think, is Crime what they Fest called it, yeah. Weekend, mm-hmm. which is it made it free for people. But at the same time that they made it free for like three or four days or whatever it was, they also introduced the Black Market, which was microtransactions. You might be like, oh, what? Well, is it going to be cosmetics? That's not such a big deal if it's just cosmetics. That's where the problem is and why people are so pissed off. So it's your typical crate drops that you get. And the crates can drop on any number of things from skins for costumes, I believe, to weapons. But the problem is the skins, for the most part, give statistical, like, beneficial upgrades. And a lot of the time, the skins are for guns that you have to go pay, like, money to unlock. So it's like, I got the sweet skin that gives this shotgun, which is straight up pay to win, uh, plus five damage. Just as an example, I'm sure it doesn't say plus five damage or percentile increase. You go check the shotgun, you're like, oh, in order to get the shotgun, I have to buy... I have to buy the shotgun outright. And right away, initially when this, these microtransactions were introduced, uh, you had to buy drills to open up the crates, which were two forty nine dollars a drill. So you get a uh, – if you guys remember, at the end of every payday level, everybody gets a card. Right. You pick mm. a card, mm. you get a bonus. Usually it was a skin or, or a mask. Now those cards can be crates essentially. Drills open the crates, two forty nine. dollars People were pissed off. They kind of alleviated that a little bit by making drills incredibly rare drops that you can get at the mm. end of every level. Still a problem. But not only is the game straight up pay to win now um, with, with the skins basically giving powerful upgrades to weapons, they also make you go buy the weapons for most, for most of the skins that are being dropped. So it's just basically squeezing you for as much money as possible on top of it being a $20 game with $100 worth of DLC attached to it. And the DLC, obviously, I mean, like, you take that by itself and it's really not that big of a deal. For a $20 right. game to have a bunch of DLC offerings, you know, nobody really cares about that. That's not the problem here. The issue is that they're doing that very blatant pay-to-win scheme. And, okay, scheme is kind of a nasty word for it. That makes it sound like they're in the back room going, <laughs> we got them now! <laughs> they're, you know, they, they have a system in place now that is very clearly designed to give the people that are paying money a distinct advantage in the game. Which is, when it's a game that, you know, pits people against each other in any meaningful fashion, that is a problem. That's a big deal. Yep. So I'm um, just going to bring up, you keep talking because I'm going to bring yeah. up the it's a game specific. that's it's been around for years already. So to completely change the general mechanism that drives it seems very curious to me. Yeah. So from my understanding, what I read in some of the AMA was 
uh, they didn't expect to be supporting the game as long as they have, and they got picked up or supported by a developer and a ca- or producer, and they're contracted to to support the game up through 2017. Mm-hmm. So they, uh-huh. I think what they're trying to do is find ways to continue to make the game profitable for two more years, and I feel like they went just in the wrong direction. So there is one particular question and answer in the AMA that they did over on the Payday the Heist subreddit. So this AMA took place on their game subreddit, which is important to know too. Okay. But uh, they, uh, you know, they, they're just doing damage control basically. Again, I'm really glad that we waited until they did this to talk about this topic because now we have it straight from the developer's mouth. This is the big guy too. This is Almir. This is the dude over at Overkill. And, is this uh, the same guy who said when the game was coming out yeah. there will never, ever, ever be microtransactions in Payday 2? Yep. Two years ago, 2013, Almir was quoted as saying, there will never be microtransactions in Payday 2, and shame on you for thinking so. He yes. said he shamed, oh, shame on he shamed us, us yeah. for even having the idea, the inkling, that there would be microtransactions yeah, in Payday 2. Of anything. How dare us. Jesus. But... This this answer is in regards to that very thing where he stated on the Steam forums that they would not ever be having microtransactions in the game. It's about eight paragraphs long, but there's, here's the gist of it. Yes, we said that. Now we're going to have them. Sorry. But the other part of that is he starts to discuss how two years ago when Payday 2 was at the top of the Steam charts and, you know, top five with the DLC even as well, They were doing extremely well, and here, let me just quote what he said. Two years ago, people would have us instantly start work on Payday 3 right after we released Payday 2, like developers usually do. Instead, we decided to continue work on Payday 2 because we wanted to make it an incredible co-op experience. 88 updates later, we have to ensure the future survival of the game. And then he goes on a little bit more with sales details and all that sort of stuff. But that right there is kind of what I think is the backbone behind this entire decision. The decision not to work on Payday 3 and instead to try to, you know, elongate the lifespan of Payday 2. Because it's been out for over two years now, and normally that is not, you know, like, extremely sustainable for a not AAA game. You know? Like, for this studio, which has tripled in size, by the way, since its inception... Since mm-hmm. Payday 2 came out, they have tripled the staff, ne- meaning that obviously they have a lot more people whose bills they need to pay and mouths they need to feed in order to keep the company going. But they're not working on making another game. Everything this studio mm-hmm. is doing right now is going into Payday 2, which means they kind of have, they've shoehorned themselves into a position where this late into the game's life cycle, they almost have to do stuff like this. They don't really it's have a in- choice. It, what is an interesting question, though, um, bet- it's like the paradigm of like games as a product or of games as a service. Mm-hmm. Like League of Legends is a service. Uh, Hearthstone is a service, basically. Yeah. That it's a platform for you to play this game on forever. It, it just keeps growing and changing, et cetera, et cetera. Or is it a product where it's like payday one, payday two, payday three? Um, it, you can't kind of have it both ways, though. I kind of feel like that's got to be designed or at least told to people a little earlier. Because if people buy this thinking like, oh, I'll buy this for 20 bucks and then I'll get all the content and I can play it as long as I want, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and then they're like, well, now we want to keep it going as a service. But in order to do that, we have to finance it through like these microtransactions that can compromise the balance of the original game. It, it sends a really bad message like... I think you kind of have to make that deviation earlier. Otherwise, you have this huge community of, like, millions of players that now have this expectation that they feel has been betrayed. Yeah. Like, nobody's getting angry at Hearthstone for making a $25 expansion because that's part of the game. That's, well, like, the... Ex- <laughs> well, okay, yeah, you <laughs> know, but... Nobody is. There's always something <laughs> mad about everything. But, yeah, that's exactly like you described it. It's it's expected. There's a precedent set very early on, and, like, this is going to be the model that we go by this entire time. And when you say something, and then very deliberately and almost shamefully go back on it that is what's really yeah exactly like that is that is what is spurring this entire ordeal and i really wonder how bad if any backlash would have been happening if it was straight up just cosmetic deal like microtransactions like Mm. you can buy very certain skins or whatever if it was just that like in csgo or whatever where it's pretty because they they and i think one of the the questions he straight up says we looked at csgo 
as an inspiration for yes. us. Well, but obviously. At, <laughs> I mean, like, but not really because CSGO doesn't sell statistical power upgrades for microtransactions. It's all cosmetic. So I don't know, man. And I don't understand. They've done paid DLC before, so why is this the preferable route? I guess just because it's more uh, viable long-term, you don't have to put in as much money, if any, uh, development-wise would probably be it, right? I mean, they, they've like like they said, they've tripled the size. They probably have to pay a ton of people now, and if they yeah. have no future working on a Payday 3 or anything, they yeah. might as well just shoot down, like, like just squeeze Payday 2 for all it's worth. What is the precedent for an online multiplayer game being viable for more than two or three years? I mean, look at what yeah. we've talked about in the past, like Titanfall and Evolve. Those are newer than that, and both of them now probably don't have much of any audience. If, if Titanfall and Evolve had been able to maintain the sort of community and, you know, like, general sense of goodwill and, you know, like, wish for the game yep. to continue on that Payday has, or at least had. Like, it's a different story. This is they a had whole... a very active community. They, they actually had bucked the trend. They have become yeah. the first one to do what all the others have been trying to do, and then they kind of threw it away, maybe. Yeah, no, they, they almost entirely did. Like, they had something really special here. Payday's community was huge. They were so into it. They've been trying to be on Overkill's side for a very long time, and now it's just sort of being all ruined, almost. There's another part of this, too, that I think is a very interesting uh, segment of the conversation. Uh, there's a question during the AMA as well that asks, how, how do you think adding stats to weapon skins, uh, you know, kind of promotes the game's healthy future? And their defense of it was that they don't believe it's pay to win because they balance the game around the base game, not on any DLC you might own or any stat boost you might have. What do you guys it's think a of... really weird answer. Yeah, no, no, no. not no, really just... balancing it. That's no, ignoring like, we're it. balancing it around the vanilla game, not mm. none of the hundred dollars of DLC that people probably own. It's like, okay. Yeah, no, I, I initially reading this, I'm like, no, that that's not how you should do it. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> kind of objectively, that's wrong, right? Well, based on the vanilla game, it's balanced. Yeah, don't worry about the guys who have everything else. <laughs> I, the thing that gets me, and it, it's kind of, I don't know, it's rich to comment on it without actually knowing what's happening inside of the studio, which is, I, I resent doing this, but at the same time, I'm reading the AMA, and the, it's all like, well, we had to do this to sustain our staff size of 75, yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Look, I'm not going to say that I want people to be out of a job, but at the same time, how, how does that work from a management standpoint? Your game sells, like, a lot of, uh, incredible amount of copies. You triple in size within, like, two yeah, or three two years, years, and then what, yeah. do, you, what do you think is going to happen? Like... You're, it's very short-sighted. I agree with you. That's, triple that's in size kind of what I'm trying to get at. Like, triple in size, if what you're going to do is s send some of that development team to work on the sequel. Exactly. And keep some of them back to, to produce content for Payday 2. So that in two to three years, you can be like, here's a teaser for Payday 3. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at a company like Paradox, they've exploded in size in like six or seven years. Yeah. Uh, since their strategy stuff started finally taking off. But, you know, th they are not coming out with like two games a year now. They're, they've diversified and they have people doing other stuff, I guess. They're not just, um, you know, putting putting crates in EU4 and saying, It's almost like, like I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's almost like, I mean, maybe not, not comparable in the same way, but, Ro uh, yeah, was it Rovio or Zingo, whatever, mm, yeah, that, yeah. that like, put all their be like eggs in Angry Birds, and mm. then oh, when that stopped good. being like a that. cash cow, they that had to, like, cut... Oh, my God, what happened to Zinga? Where yeah. did they, they go? As well, like... It, those two companies did very similar things where they had two very, like, each one had a very successful game, like, one game, Angry Birds, like, Farmville for the other one. They blew up, they explode, like, they, they tripled their, or more, their company size, and when those yeah. two games dried up and they had nothing else, they had to fire a ton of people. It's like because... they say on, say on Shark Tank all the time, it's the difference between having a product and having a company. Correct. They got a product, and they called it a company. Did I think you? the the other thing is, and I have no management experience, but it Same. seems to me like your revenue should dictate the number of employees, not like your number of employees dictates what your revenue should be. But that might be maybe a bit of an idealistic concept, so I it's guess. Like, it's like if one of us... Just like we're super small, we had one video go super viral and we quit our job. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what I was saying. And then you're like, 
hire hire a man. I was gonna say, yeah, no, it would be better if you got like a, a million views on one video and decided to hire two people to help you run your channel. Like, You're that's like about I get and... 10, 10 views a video, one of them goes super viral. I quit my job, I hire an artist, I hire a manager, and, and I hire throw... somebody to run my Twitter. You feel like every video now is a minute long. You throw <laughs> mid rolls in, and you're like, sorry guys, I gotta throw the mid rolls in because I gotta sustain the people that I hired. <laughs> it's like. If, Let's play Assassin's Creed Syndicate Part One. Great. One minute per. <laughs> I still just feel like, like they have they not made like a quadrillion dollars. Like they, Payday and Payday Two are unbelievably <laughs> successful. They but, they did. They made a lot of money. They made. I think they made eight million in profit. Mm -hmm. I pay, Payday Two, Steam Spy, as we've been told many times, is not immutable in terms of its data, but. It does estimate it as having fucking 5.4 million owners mm. on Steam. 5.4 million! That's... And then um, Payday 1 has got to be at least like a couple million. A couple I'm million, assuming. I would imagine. Yeah. I, no, it's, it's not a couple million. It's four. Jesus four million. Jesus Christ, wow. That's like nine, close to 10 million units on PC alone. That's gigantic. That is huge. Basically. Ubisoft has plaques up in their offices <laughs> for 2 million units sold. I'm oh, serious. Wow. Like, that's big. That's twice as much. Ah, that's two plaques and more. Yeah. Um, they got two plaques worth. You should tell them that. They'd be so happy. <laughs> I'll give two them a plaque. Two plaques worth. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, man. We believe it isn't pay to win as we balance the game around the base game. Not on any DLC and you might own. And then introduced more things that don't fall into that balance. AKA, the game's not balanced. Give us money. How do you... It's... They're literally just agreeing that it's not balanced with that statement. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say that out loud and think, yeah. You know yeah, what? No, yeah, that's, that's, that's what right. I just said. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that in spite of all this, I do feel somewhat for the development and design side of, of Overkill, where they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. You know, if their alternatives were like, um, or their, their choices were, do this to finance, to, to basically turn Payday 2 into a platform that Payday can be played upon eternally. Yeah. Uh, or announce Payday 3. Even though it's been like two, it, it would probably be three, three and a half years since Payday 2 by the time Payday 3 came out. People would still be like, why would I buy Payday 3? You know, I just bought Payday 2. Yeah. Even though it's like an undergraduate degree ago. But um, I, I think that if you are going to transition like this, okay, you have a couple of options. You do it the CSGO way, flat fee for the game cosmetic items people will be mad but they'll get over it mm -hmm. and they'll spend money right if csgo is any indication or make it free and then do this and like exactly yeah. the same model you already have and then people will be like well the game is free but you can support it by buying stuff you feel good about it maybe right or just make it cost twenty dollars keep selling like a hundred thousand units a month and then maybe that's okay Right. <laughs> you right. Do right. If that's okay. not okay, I yeah. God I hope that you have the time to reevaluate your business model. That's what. It's like, why? Like, I mean, if you're gonna this do this, game make the not... game free. I don't understand. Like, because like Ryan said, at least maybe phrase. people can swallow it if you make it free and introduce microtransactions. But you're like twenty dollars, please. Also, here's like a million microtransactions. Mm -hmm. Also, here's a ton of DLC. Oh. But and we balance it around worse, vanilla. You'll have a worse time if you don't spend more money. <laughs> right. <laughs> you will definitely have. You'll, you will see other people having a better time having spent more. And that is clearly the reason for it. But we balanced it around the original games. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're starting to repeat ourselves Going a circles, little bit yeah. here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. More, more or less the... Uh, I mean, we're trying to provide an answer, I think, for it, really. I, I think we're trying to get to sort of a, a point of closure on this. But it's that they double dipped. Yeah, it's that it's kind of just a big mess, and sorry, we're we're, we're sorry on behalf of <laughs> Overkill and like anyone who's having a bad time with this. You really can't betray your community in this, yeah. especially like if you're making like a ton of money. Mm -hmm. Like you're already. I know that the people that are working at Overkill are pro, like pro junior programmer number ninety is not like a millionaire because of his work at Overkill. But the studio has what is to us an unfathomable amount of money, 
And then to be like, well, this game was like 30 times more successful than we could have imagined when the first game came out, which was only four years ago. But mm -hmm. we've gotten like too big too fast. I, to me, what it is is like it sends the wrong message of like we're us, we're a business, we're not a game development studio, which is unfortunately a fact of life, or it, it maybe even not unfortunately. But you know, you look at like um, look at Jonathan Blow, who who makes like a couple million dollars, maybe even a little bit more on Braid, and then puts all of that money and then like nine years into making yeah. The Witness because he wants to make like a he wants to make games, he doesn't want to make money. Uh, the what Overkill is doing is saying like we need to sustain this game to sustain seventy five employees seems like the antithesis yeah. of that to me. Right. Right. If you're one dude with a dream, you can sustain your dream and take risks like that. But when you have seventy five people that need to live, exactly, there is no dream involved at that point. It's just how can we stay viable? There's actually a very uh, damning post uh, made <laughs> to follow up uh, one of Overkill's responses in the AMA. He uh, he mentioned that you know we're we're get, we're getting to this broader point of they're having to do what they're doing in order to keep their studio afloat, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, someone actually posts in response their financial reports to their investors, which you know there's a press release for it. Uh, this is from August 27th, and, and like every single data point is uh, reflecting how they're having better revenue in Q4 of 2015 than they've ever had as a company. Mm -hmm. They have to look good for their investors. Yeah, but that's kind of... It's really just like the nail in the coffin when you can see that and just immediately disprove the point of, oh, you know, we're having to do this yeah. to keep us all going when, I mean, again, we're... Okay, I have a minimal amount of managerial experience, so I don't want to, you know, like okay. have, to, have to broaden the scope again, but this is just... It just looks like a badly managed situation over the course of years. It, it seems like a, the kind of thing that's been happening as a result of them just not being able to lock down the, the route they wanted to take. Mm -hmm. And now it's blown up, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Also, Zynga is trading at 239 a share if you're interested. That shit bothers me. <laughs> that is even worse. It's like, <laughs> I actually think that Overkill wants to make games. I, yeah. Zynga mm -hmm. is like... You know, Farmville's huge. Now we can all be like turbo millionaires like we always yeah. wanted. <laughs> yeah. Why? Like, even without any managerial well, experience, term. I'm like, yeah. here's if I had a game, and let's say I had a team of 20 people, and we made, let's not say Farmville, but let's say, um, what was it? Um, draw Candy something, Crush? right? Oh, okay. So, draw something. I, I am totally in their camp where they made a game, not even a company, basically. And then they had a choice between like growing it into a big company and taking risks or like to, to make what? To make more mobile games. It's not like they need the resources. Right. Or they could cash out for like $10 billion. It wasn't right. $10 billion, but um, mm -hmm. let, me, let me see what Draw Something sold for. I can't remember. But um, yeah, $183 million. Um, Jesus, wow. Why in the world, as a game developer... Would you choose to build a business instead of taking your share of $183 million <laughs> and then making whatever you want forever? Right, Zynga's, you just do like whatever you want. Zynga's stock price literally dropped by a penny while you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know this updated automatically. That's pretty cool. Isn't the only other element in that equation ego then? That you just believe in yourself so much and you have this inflated sense of ego that like I'm worth more than $183 million. Yeah. That's I don't know. Is, someone there. Uh, I don't know, man. Well, man, when your God. passion is in, and I think that's kind of what he, what Ryan is getting at is that there's people who they they blow up and their passion is still in the thing that they you, you have become incredibly yeah. successful at, so they continue at it and they, and they try to get even better at it. Or there's people that have made a thing and that thing has become wildly successful and they're perfectly fine with yeah. just saying, "Okay, cool, I did it." No, I'm I'm uh, totally with you and I'm totally for the whole passion thing. I'm like, that's what makes me excited about video games in general. Mm. But how excited can you be about draw something? How passionate exactly. can you be about that? Let's concept? ask David Cage. We'll find out how passionate you can really be about something. <laughs> Not that it's even a bad game, but it's just I think we if you. Everybody almost was looking at stuff like this at the time that happened and being like, really? Like, yeah. that? you're going to regret that. <laughs> but when we look back, it's going to seem even sillier, I think. You're like, you made one game. It was like a time management game about farming. It got huge. And you tried to make it like a, 
like a 500 person a company yes what are like you talking culture. about it's like <laughs> publicly traded publicly wait, wait, traded wait. farmville you invented okay. like the rubik's cube and then you try to like spin that into being google <laughs> or something like that it just doesn't some, it doesn't make any sense all right mathis me. you found something here yeah uh overkill is walking on another working on another game oh okay. they're working on the walking dead what overkills the walking dead um, produced by Starbreeze Studios. I Here's feel like link. we should have remembered that. Uh, I didn't. There you go. There's a link. Starbreeze Games Walking Dead overkills The Walking Dead. Oh. They're working on that. I only looked that up because so they're going to be really hard up for money when this Walking Dead first person shooter comes out. <laughs> right. I was, I was looking at that because I knew that Starbreeze was working with Overkill on something. I couldn't remember if they owned them because I looked up Starbreeze's stocks, which actually plummeted a little bit um, over the past couple days, which I don't know has anything to do with it. Uh, Starbreeze. Uh, Starbreeze produced Brothers? Yes. Yeah. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, yeah. Man. The yeah. freaking no, then five plummet. degrees it just of dropped a little bit. Starbreeze stocks have dropped a couple points. I didn't look at this as a thing that would really cause stock prices to drop, by the way. I'm pretty sure none of the people looking at that data give a goddamn about whether yeah. or not these but they are, but they are working are they're on. working on the walking dead they yeah. were working on a walking dead game for 2016 cuz that like mm. you said cuz that's going to flop yeah right terrible. <laughs> i'm i'm concerned about their uh, about their ability to generate revenue what with <laughs> that most lucrative license uh, except for the nfl on earth right now mm -hmm. yeah i i think they'll be able to uh, tug at our heartstrings for a while yet Oh boy, that was. To be fair, you probably do need a pretty large staff to make a game on a license like that that will impress I'm, people. I'm yeah. really confused by the sarcasm here because there have been Walking Dead games that have totally flopped. So, like, why are we so? Yeah, well, those. That good. I mean, okay, we're <laughs> we're looking at the uh, Earl and Earl in a game. Yeah, yeah that's in a, in a much at. different light than I think Overkill's upcoming okay. Walking Dead attempt. Well, so there's there's and just a lot of confidence then. I'm sure that. Um, Survival instincts. It sold more than it should have. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy thousand owners on Steam, which is not yeah. necessarily good, but I imagine that is the kind of game that probably got picked up by people who didn't know any better. Uh, Four like million people own Payday Two. Four yeah. million. And it's pretty wild. That is outstanding. Wow. Okay. Let's take a look at the Steam forums. <laughs> yeah, you go, you go yeah. read the paid A2 Steam forums. That's going to be a good time. I could probably make like three videos out of this controversy. Yeah, I bet you could. Oh my god. <laughs> make a bunch of money, man. You, you, you make that video, you tell Get people to share it around so that Overkill sees what they've done. You, yeah. you need to be the voice of reason. Here. Damn it, Overkill! <laughs> You've done it. Yeah, that's you how you started. Shit on our hearts. That's all you have, have to do freeze. is like ten seconds at the beginning. You're just going, no, come on, <laughs> overkill, damn it. No, oh. the first, no, the first three seconds are me being like, I heard there was news on overkill. <laughs> <laughs> and then I start reading it, and then my eyes slowly widen. Yeah. <laughs> no, god yeah. damn it. Mm -hmm. I want you to raise enough money through your videos that you can send them the two plaques that they're owed. <laughs> <laughs> I need to put in a lot of mid rolls for that though. That's okay. It's part of the job. All right. <laughs> For years, YouTube's fans have been telling us they want more. More choice when watching their favorite content. More ways to support their favorite creators. And above all, the option to watch their favorite videos uninterrupted. The top trending guy just show up? What just happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Put this up on E-Bombs World. Yeah. Oh, don't. No. They hate <laughs> me there. YouTube Red is a thing. Sure $9.99 a month. Costs uh, or the uh, the full package removes ads from the entirety of YouTube, and you get to watch things offline. And Google mm -hmm. Music and subscription and Google Play Music thing, yeah. Of PewDiePie yeah. series, yeah, man. That thing actually does not look bad. That I thought that was a pretty good idea for a TV show based around PewDiePie. I I, I kind of like it. And other yeah. content as well will mm -hmm. be there. If you don't know what we're talking about, YouTube Red is the the brand new, just announced, uh, and it should be going into effect. Actually, is that going to be when it's like this a couple days, up? right? Yeah. So. Uh, tomorrow for us. Oh, okay. So live. it will be live. Okay. So there you go. So people will have already been experiencing YouTube Red. So yet again, we Classic get to... Us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's very, very true. Uh, the, um, the, the sell of this... 
product is kind of tough right now just because you know it's it's in its infancy again and most things in their infancy in this day and age tend to you know have a struggle to start up with but I uh, I also don't know about the future of it. I'm talking spe- specifically about the offering of YouTube Red to the consumer right now. Clearly, there's a whole other discussion to be had about what YouTube Red actually means to us as creators. But if you're looking at this from the perspective of somebody who watches YouTube and wants to get YouTube Red or potentially is thinking about it, what are you thinking right now? I could get ad block for free. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on. No, no, I don't. No, yeah, I, I, don't, I that. agree that that's not the right opinion, but I think that a lot of people no, have that opinion. I agree. No, because, okay, so here's my argument against that. The people who are saying that already have ad block. The people yes. who aren't are going to be the people who say, I want to support these people and I don't want ads. I will pick okay. up YouTube Red. I think the people who, there's going to be a very small conversion rate from people who already have ad block to YouTube Red because the people who want ad block have it already. That's my that's my opinion. I think that the people who are going to pick up YouTube Red are maybe a small number of people who have have ad block and say if this is my way of supporting creators instead of using ad block I will. And the people who don't have ad block who watch the ads and say, "Hey, I can get what I want with no ads and I can support them the same way I would be if I was watching ads already." I will I'll grab this. I, I think love, that's the people. I love to think that there are a lot of people who think like that. And we're, we're talking about, you know, like the, the big scale of all the consumers of YouTube content. The people who are having those thoughts run through their mind are probably in the very small margin, right? Still, I mean, even though I think it's gotten better, I think there's still the, a lot of people who aren't really aware of those sort of repercussions. Right. If right. somebody is already going to be like, well, I can get an ad block for free, then there, there's nothing for those people that you can give Mm -hmm. literally ad block is the perfect solution and i don't feel like that's like strange to say Mm. it's a free plugin that makes it so you don't see ads if that's literally the only thing you're concerned about like you can exempt yourself from the conversation because you have you've solved it from your perspective like there's there's never going to be a better value proposition than the thing that does what you want for free for free Mm -hmm. the the only way it would be better is if it did what you wanted for free and also supported the people you liked yeah well, I've so- had this I've had this like internal dilemma actually about something that not even was YouTube related. I had this about deciding upon a gym to go to near my house. Mm-hmm. Like when you're looking at two competing products or services and you're a consumer and you're worried about getting what you want at the cheapest price and having everything you need, right? I have t- two gyms. One of them is smaller, further away, but is locally owned. And, you know, it would feel good to support, like, a family-owned business. There's also, like, a chain that's down the street, cheaper, and has more equipment. I'm going to go with the chain. I can't not go with the chain, right? So when you have something like this, YouTube Red is offering... You pay for a couple extra perks, whereas with Adblock, as you mentioned, it's basically the perfect solution if you don't want to watch ads, but you want to watch YouTube. It's tough there's, to compete with that. It's the same one, number of people who are going to pick up YouTube Red as the same people, the same number of people who have Twitch Turbo. Yeah, yeah. Not many, and it will have no bearing or effect on any of us. Well, that kind of ruins the entire conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't fully agree with Mathis, but I think I have a tendency to. Every t- how many times have we woken up to some YouTube news and then mm-hmm. our Twitter feed is just YouTubers like, oh, the sky is falling, nobody cares yeah. about us, blah blah blah. Fucking Nobody content ID, <laughs> tip jar. Like I'm managed not to, versus unmanaged. Right. Uh, Which, and, and some of those things have had big repercussions, I'll admit. Um, but at the but same time, here. YouTube's still here. People are still growing. You know, new people are popping up every single day. Mm-hmm. And like some of the stuff we've talked about, like tip jar, you can spend like six hours having a conversation about tip jar on YouTube. It, nobody makes any money on tip jar. <laughs> you know, it, it, nobody's sure. making, you might make lunch for one month. I don't even I've have I've made $4. <laughs> yeah, like Twitch doesn't make yeah, anybody. I did a positive money. change, actually. It, it's not even worth the time spent to discuss it. So I, I really don't want to get too invested in the conversation on YouTube Red until we see it in action. Because yeah, Twitch Turbo is like the same thing. You get paid based on the the viewing share, and it makes no appreciation. I've never heard someone be like, "Man, my revenue is really down this month because so many people got Turbo in the humble bundle." Like it's never it's right. never happened. Uh, but I will say the thing that is interesting is the free trial thing that they're doing 
We don't know, so I don't want to kick up any fervor. But yeah. if YouTube ends up doing that free trial in November for U.S. viewers, and a lot of people redeem it, and it doesn't actually pay out to creators, that would be a little fucked up. But you still have to see how it's actually going to manifest itself. It, it might have some impact. It might have 5% impact. It might have zero impact. Mm -hmm. So, like Mathis said, the, the audiences are probably similar. I agree with you there. The, the amount of people that buy YouTube Red will probably be comparable as far as relative size goes to the amount of people that buy Twitch Turbo. Uh, let's call that 1% even. Let's say sure. it's 1%. So let's say out of a random figure that there are 10,000 people watching YouTube and that 1% of those people buy YouTube Red. So that's 100 people. And that is not going to make a difference as far as creators are concerned. The, the free trial, whether or not we're actually paid for that, is going to make even less of a difference, I think. There's going to be a lot of people watching that that probably is not going to be a number that we have to worry about. This, this may be, as far as the big changes go, the least impactful on the bottom line Yeah, out of a lot of stuff. Just because, I, which is funny, because it's a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers are treating it as the biggest change. Yeah, this is what's seeing people kick up their own personal Patreons and stuff. Mm. Which I'm like, if this is what's causing you, I I'm mean, surprised to be using fair, it as an excuse yeah, to throw yeah, something yeah. in front of mm -hmm. it is all it is. Yep, that's what it is. It's a hot button issue that a lot of people are talking about, and if you can play it up to turn it into your own advantage, then that's what people are going to do. We see this happen every day in every possible oh. scenario. It's true, and I I'm mean, not like, going to be. That cynical about it, but I do. I think what it actually is is it comes from a place of like uncertainty because YouTube doesn't communicate things that well. Yeah. Well, so you know, you you hear a rumor maybe that people aren't going to get paid for YouTube Red, and you're like, oh, this is the end. Like, gotta get my Patreon up before everybody gets their Patreon yeah. up in two mm -hmm. weeks when everybody realizes it. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's the cynical like trying to manipulate people into supporting you thing, but I I do think it's a little premature. I think it's. Yeah, I no, I kind of agree with what Nick said. Like, I think there are people that sort of use it as like a spurn to get whatever personal uh, funding source they needed to go going. And obviously, we're not gonna take a dump on people using Patreon because that would be incredibly <laughs> hypocritical, <laughs> wouldn't obviously. it? But uh, yeah, it, it's it's just sort of uh, another one of those. Let's create a video that ga gains ten million views. It's kind of like you know the overkill video that we were joking about earlier. That's the kind of thing that people could sort of use this for. And YouTube Red is not the run to the hills emergency that it's sort of being plugged up to be. Well, I feel the, like people really don't realize, most people really don't realize how little you make um, per view, like mm -hmm. on a per view basis. Yeah. There yeah. are people who are like, well, I really hope that if I get YouTube Red, it still supports the people that I watch like to the same degree that I do with ads. And I'm mm -hmm. like, man, if you're putting $10 a month into the YouTube economy, that's probably like a tenfold increase on the amount that, that you actually generate through revenue yeah. by watching ads. Like, like we, we can talk about it fairly openly. Like Twitch subscription income versus Twitch ad income is like a world of difference. Like it, it could be, you know, your, your subscription revenue, depending on your numbers, could be five times, four times it's, what your ad revenue is. Mm -hmm. It's like 90-10 if I was yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. like ads... It, there are people who are like, well, I don't know. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. But if you actually look at like the CPMs that we get, which is the ad rate that we get paid, to make up for like a $10 cash influx, if you want to call it that, would take you watching like literally 100 videos a day. Take, yeah. like Even just com look at that from the smallest possible scale. Look at that from one individual person. The amount of money that you put into somebody's revenue stream by subscribing to them on Twitch is not even mathematically comparable to the amount of money you you generate from them by watching an ad for a year. Yeah, it, it pro one month of subscription might pay for your lifetime of, yeah. of viewing, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it's true. And by the way, please don't take this as a push for like, well, so you fucking freeloaders like better subscribe on Twitch because no, no, that's no, where yeah. the real money no, no. is. Just, we're just explaining it, right? And so also, don't use this to undervalue watching an ad because we do. Also true. Yeah, we yeah. do still rely on the advertisement. Revenue, so you know, but, it's a um, big part of it. It's it, basically the the reason I bring that up is because people were like, well, I don't know, ten dollars doesn't seem like that much money, and I'm like, well, it is relative to mm -hmm. watching ads. Even if YouTube takes half of it right off the cut, five dollars is you know what that could be like you watching two thousand videos or uh, fifteen hundred videos in a yeah. month. That's fifty videos a day. Yeah, some people probably do that, but that's they got to be outliers, I think. Yeah, and even still, if that's if that's it, you break even. You get mm -hmm. to watch ads and contribute exactly the same amount. But um, uh, that's why I feel like uh, 
maybe there's a little bit of misinformation there that like somehow creators are going to get fucked. And they might, depending on how the revenue split ends up happening. But I, I'm intent to wait and see. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine... Like, YouTube is going to... If Red takes off, YouTube will have so much more money. Yeah. yeah. That it would... Even if they fucked us, we might still be making more. Like, I guess YouTube, the fear, if Red takes off, is that advertisers are going to put less money into the system. No, they're not. They're, that's what people. That's what. That's the conversation topic that are that keeps coming up. Oh, and also that they might be misrepresenting how the split happens. That you're subscribing to support creators you like, but you might not be supporting people that you like. True. We have True. to. We have to wonder about the split too. I mean, obviously, it's another one of those YouTube things where there are numbers that exist, and they're in this magical ethereal realm that no one ever gets to touch or True. mess yeah. with. But I, I like the idea. That that pool is divided by the amount of time you spend watching certain channels. So this has been sort of the hypothetical that people are tossing out as far as the you know what we can speculate how YouTube's red, how YouTube Red's pot is divided for people is that for that ten dollars a month for one person if they spend eighty percent of their time watching PewDiePie videos for that month then eight dollars should go to PewDiePie right that would make well. sense. You know, minus whatever YouTube's going to take as an admin fee up front. Yeah, of course. But, like, you know, just, like, comparatively speaking, that if he the gets that giant... Oh, whoops. If he gets that giant <laughs> chunk of the pot, then that would be fair. By the way, I put WD-40 in my microphone boom arm a month yeah. and a half ago. Yeah. But that's not working out so it's well. It's not a good idea. Don't ever do it. <laughs> but <laughs> like if, the most if you have a PS4... Thing. If you have a PS4 controller with squeaky hinges, mm -hmm. do put it on there because it's it's kept mine good for a year. Nice. Well, Just a go. little, like a smidge of a drop on the end of a Q-tip. Don't put a solid drop in there. That'll be a problem. All right, and that has been our uh, regular segment of good <laughs> and bad uses of WD-40. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have that one recurring I soon. I liked it. I liked it a lot. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so this, I, I sort of segued into, you know, the next big controversial part of all this, which is whether or not people are, are going to be seeing the sort of splits from YouTube Red's uh, platform that they want to. You know, there's there's always going to be the big issue of s smaller channels are getting screwed and the rich get richer and that sort of thing. And that's, I mean, I don't want to say it so bluntly, but you sort of just have to live with that because that's going to happen all the time, forever, and has throughout the course of human history. My, my perspective on that, just very quickly, is that if everybody is making more money, what do I care if... PewDiePie is making proportionally more money mm -hmm. than I'm making as a bonus here. Like that, that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, I I'm with you on that. Like, just, we just don't know if we're store, making any more either. The grocery store down the street is not going to raise its prices because PewDiePie is making proportionally more money. Like it still, <laughs> it benefits me. If they did, that it's would be money. bizarre, That'd though, be right? Don't tell, <laughs> don't tell Overkill, though. Yeah. <laughs> We need to keep those crate prices static, but yes, you may continue, Bear. Oh, Nick, I think you were starting on something. Okay. Oh, no, it's fine. I was just saying that we don't necessarily know that we're going to be making more either. It might just be that, in essence, they're using every channel to funnel more money up. Yeah. Probably not true, but we just don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of this is really cleared up if YouTube, for once, would just say, here's how this works. <laughs> and we don't have to spend half an hour I mean, speculating. I, I I guess like I just I I sort of don't get it in a weird way. Mm. Like uh, PewDiePie already gets disproportionate benefits on YouTube, and that's is how it goes. Like he he makes YouTube like ten million dollars a year. Mm. I, is it wrong for me to say that he deserves special treatment? Like I know that he's a. Uh, a hot button issue for a number of different reasons, but like just strictly from a bottom line perspective, I I have no resentment that like if YouTube's gonna push a channel, they're gonna push PewDiePie or they're gonna push like the the you know teens react stuff. Yeah. I mean that that's just how it goes. And you know what? Like they've they've invested in the platform. Like it's not like I feel like I should be getting that instead. Like that stuff's obviously doing well. But um anyway, I guess that's another issue for another day. Yeah. But I I, I it's already disproportionate, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. And I sort of feel like it should be, but that's probably not necessarily cut and dry. And on that same note, something you said a little while ago actually really uh, struck a chord with me about that idea, which is to say that PewDiePie has literally become 
the number one YouTube entertainer. He's yeah. the best. He is the best YouTuber by yeah. numbers. You know, like I'm not saying by quality or anything of that sort of argument. I'm just saying, like, if you look at YouTube, PewDiePie is number one. Therefore, it stands to reason that he should be able to do this stuff. He should be the star. He should be the face of it. He should be the person getting his own TV show and seeing the best results from the stuff that YouTube is doing. And My God, it's like how business works. Right? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's so surprising. I like people shouldn't really have an issue with that. Just just like I I am excited about the prospect of people being able to watch without ads and still support me. And I take no issue with how much of that money I'm not getting. I love that I might be getting a little bit more <laughs> of that money. Like right. that's really yes. exciting. But it's just so it's I think it's blown out of proportion and also sort of misguided about what it is that people are really upset about. I guess what what I hear a lot and uh, that maybe I've misrepresented is they're like they don't want if I put if they put ten dollars into the system and they never watch PewDiePie mm -hmm. or just as an example, yeah. They don't want any of that money to go to PewDiePie. He's just the most convenient example, by the way. He, We're not really like trying to talk I mean, specifically about him all it's, the time. It's not like PewDiePie, PewDiePie is like, up. Yeah. It, yeah. It's not like I'm saying like he's a morally reprehensible like piece of shit. So, you know, I don't want my, it's like drug money or something like that. Yeah. You know, blood diamonds, right? Mm -hmm. But um, they're PewDiePie, like, well, I, <laughs> PewDiePie I wanted blood to go. Is, that's, a, that's a whole nother idea. Okay, go ahead. I wanted to go to like the people that I support and I support only. But I don't know, like, isn't it <laughs> like if, if you put in ten dollars into the system and then you exclusively watch Mathis games, you are smart man disproportionately buffing up Mathis's games view time in the YouTube Red system. Technically, all of the money that you put into the system, at least after YouTube's cut, would be going to Mathis games with our assumption of how the system works. It's not like you put in ten dollars and now you own. Oh. The 30 million that YouTube is making from YouTube Red, and then like some of it goes to PewDiePie, and you get mad about it. Like you're already, it is almost proportional already from my perspective. But mm. I thought the thing that was still up for debate was where that pool gets divided, and if it gets divided amongst everyone in the entirety of the system. That's what the the YouTube splash said was that it's going to be divided. Based on proportional to view time for every partner that's opted into YouTube. Yeah, Red. that's more or less the only like official word from YouTube that we've gotten on it. That that is going to be more or less how the split works. But of course, we don't know the numbers. Yes. <laughs> so this I conversation still don't could be think completely... it's going yeah. to be a huge thing either. So I agree yeah. with you, actually. I really, I will. I, man, if they would just give individual subscriptions. Yeah, it and that's change. it would be you know, that's the perfect way to show support yeah. of your creators, man. Mm -hmm. We've been we've been uh, you know asking for that for fucking oh. months, even not just this show. Step, yeah, like, it is a good step. It is a good step. It's a now start. Go know, another you, step. It's a huge company. <laughs> it takes it takes a while to get the wheels moving. And I don't know, man. I I do kind of get a little resentful sometimes when I see like YouTube announces something and immediately. Almost every time, it's like, fuck YouTube, fuck it. Like, I know that they built this platform that enables me to, like, do my job, but fuck it, and this sucks, stupid. Sh and then, like, this uproar. And if I was YouTube, I'd be like, why would I ever try? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. why why would I try to do new things? Like, if it's working out okay for me already, maybe it's not. But um, I don't know if I would say, why would I try to do new things? I would say, why would I ever try to deal with the backlash of these new things? Yeah. Like they don't. I guess. Yeah, they don't have to. I guess. There's no reason for them to subject with themselves to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll also say, from like a, a non-partner standpoint, I think it's a pretty good deal. I think ten dollars for a Google Play Music subscription and and YouTube without ads seems like a fair price point for me. Now, to be fair, you know, Netflix is twelve dollars, or even twelve dollars for four K resolution, like nine dollars for for regular subscription and you get access to like almost every piece of media ever made but as kind of an unrealistic expectation you know i i feel like ten dollars is kind of a fair price point for that considering what you get youtube 
at least acknowledges that they have to offer a little bit more than just like you know ad free viewing of their yes. website. I, uh, they're they're definitely going down the route, obviously, of creating their own premier original content that you can uh, get by way of YouTube Red. But they, I think they're going to be a, a ways off as far as being able to offer something legitimate there. It's sort of just, I don't even know if there's, is there anything besides the PewDiePie show that's just lined up for the YouTube there Red premiere? There's a small launch? list. There is, I think, at least five or six different. Mm -hmm. YouTube Red launch shows. That's, that's, that's what I'm that. for, mm -hmm. yeah. And people are like, man, you, I hope you don't make your shit YouTube Red um, specific. I'm like, yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> like, it, it's... <laughs> A number one recipe for like killing your channel. Okay, so here's I've got the list here. Right. Uh, Scare PewDiePie. Yep. Sing it from the Fine Brothers, a scripted comedy that satirizes reality singing competitions. Cool. All right. Laser Team is a full length or feature length action comedy from Rooster Teeth. Trip to Unicorn Island from the team and astronauts wanted this feature length movie gives fans an extraordinary look inside the life and journey of Lily Singh. Untitled Joey Graceffa Project. You can probably figure that one out for yourself. <laughs> 360 Project from Matt Pat of Game Theory. Single by 30, in this romantic drama by blah, 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 untitled college humor product, I Am Tobuscus, a scripted comedy show from Toby Turner. That's about it. I Am Tobuscus. Where is I Am Isaac? The Isaac Let's Play. <laughs> <laughs> More than mine. You gotta get on that YouTube red train, man. Mm-hmm. Will I gotta and finally action. defeat Green Man. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of with Bear, where I'm like, a show where PewDiePie gets scared by shit, kind of like a like a prank show, could be funny. Yeah, I might watch it. I just a prank, prank, bro. Yeah, it's just a prank. <laughs> he just starts getting beat up as they scream. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. Uh, now we're talking about beating up PewDiePie. Now we're really getting into dangerous territory. Far. I kind of like him, to yeah. be honest. With you. No, I think he's a good guy. All right, well, YouTube Red, I don't think is going to scare anybody off. But they, they sure will act like it, won't they? I do dislike Every that time. it's U.S. only, but that's the law, mm. and, you know, so. Cool. Yeah, normally those... I will sign up for it, personally. You think you will? I will. You will, for sure, okay. I don't use Adblock. I never have, and it would be nice. I also mm -hmm. have never used Adblock. Oh, well, on I... that note, by the way, now that we were talking about that, uh, remove Adblock Pro, because it's kind of fishy now. Really? PSA to everybody. Well, what, what's the specifics of that? Uh, it was sold to a new owner, and that new owner is very mysterious and it's is doing some overkill. weird things with it. It's, it's overkill. overkill. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! They did it again! Yeah. Uh, you can keep using whatever ad block you want, but I appreciate it if you don't, by the way. Okay. I actually, like, what? I, I, when I first used Kate's computer, it had ad block on it. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I didn't notice any difference for the most part. Yeah? Like, I... I don't know. I guess I think I've spent so much time on the internet seeing ads that they're just like already, they just fade away into noise when I see them for the most part. The, the ads I find super annoying are when you go to like Forbes and then it's like, mm -hmm. here's an ad and in 10 seconds you can skip to the web page. And I'm like, you right. fucking click yeah. bait. God, you got I can, me. You're going to the right websites, man. I can give you a couple of options if you're looking for websites that know how to ruin your viewing experience via ads. Like the ones where yeah. they gray the out the background, <laughs> and then there's like a pop up, and you gotta click yeah. through it, and then sign up for something before the rest of the background will come oh, out. Where there's like nine play buttons, and you're like, which one of these oh, is yeah, not an ad? You gotta look the at the bottom bar. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're 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 trying to watch some online sports. If those are the kind of ads you're seeing, aren't well, you? we have cable, so I don't need to go that far. But oh, okay. uh, I think Kate was trying to watch like Game Center CX, that like Japanese show about the guy who just sits in a room and beats a game over the course of like several days and we're like that. i don't know where to find this so she found like a kind of sketchy website but it was like it had like four play buttons on the video frame. yeah yeah Fuck. Like, which one do i have to <laughs> is this really <laughs> worth it now one in yeah four chance one in four chance no key <laughs> like... logger no key logger <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's a legitimate a in... concern you're taking with that there's a one in four chance that i can watch this video and a three in four chance i'm going to install malware <laughs> It seems like a bad idea, but and for those people, we we recognize the value of ad block. Well, if I wanted to watch it without doing that, I should just move to Japan and mm -hmm. get a subscription to the cable service. See, now you're learning. When will Japan start giving a digital distribution service for their shows for Canadian viewers? It's <laughs> like it's 2015. Speaking of weird, intrusive web page stuff, this page wants to install a service handler. Um, what page are you on? I'm on Gmail. What does that mean? Should I let it? Uh, What's a service handler? 
to install a service handler Chrome. Um, oh, it's cool. It's like a little thing to open email links. Okay, anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, time for Ask Roundtable. <laughs> It's everybody's favorite part of the show where you send in questions to roundtableyt at gmail.com and we do our best to answer them. And this question comes from Stuart. Stuart wants to know, what is the perfect game to you? By which I mean, what genre, mechanics, art style, story, soundtrack, any other aspects would you envision as the perfect game? Thank you, Stuart, for that question. Nick. Yeah. What's this your is perfect a really game? easy one for me, actually. Is it? Oh, good. I thought it was going to be hard and then I gave it a couple of minutes. I was like, you know what? Actually, this is pretty easy. Uh, gigantic ass symphony of the night with high res sprites so like 200 plus hours of roaming the most expansive castle full of every possible mythological creature to collect all of the items and gain all of the abilities there you go i will also i will also throw out uh, mega man with all of the bosses put into one game oh like a shadow of the colossus mega man it, well, like, just imagine you get to the, the screen where you pick which boss, and it's got, like, 85 heads to pick from. Oh, that'd be cool. Okay, And yeah, then you I just like spiral that. out of control Isaac style by the end. You're just, like, a fucking god. Nice. <laughs> that, oh, that That's sounds fine. really cool, actually. Well, I want to play that. the build of all time, and you can barely do any damage. Yeah, hmm. well, you pick all the wrong ones to go <laughs> down the route of all 80 bosses. There you go. <laughs> All right, Mathis, what do you got? I don't know. Uh, Come uh, on, man. What's the your, one where what's your punch early you access? Survive, right? yeah. Early access, survival, <laughs> zombie, apocalypse. With collectible uh, trading cards. Right, and microtransactions and glitchy zombies. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think I, every time you think, I, I think about this question, I go back to what did I have the most fun with back when I was younger. And I think a game similar to the way Star Wars Galaxies worked, the MMO, Mm -hmm. which is like a much harder core MMO. I would love to see a hardcore non-theme park MMO come back where you know what you whatever you're doing at the time is a skill that improves, not pick a class, you get to kind of form your own class. I'd like to see that happen again. It's been so long since we've had a game like that and I could see myself losing a bajillion hours into it. All right. All right. Ryan, what do you got? You know, it's already Isaac. Weird. I'm just going to describe Isaac. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, for me, the games that I gravitate most towards are short and replayable. That doesn't only include Isaac and Spelunky and stuff like that, but Magic the Gathering is kind of in the same boat. You know, it's like a 40-minute experience or a 20-minute experience that's repeatable and is different every time. Deep level of strategy, but also uh, fairly accessible. That doesn't necessarily And a little random. Magic. A little bit of randomness, yeah, so you don't know what's coming. And, um, yeah, I think that's it for me. It's like... Short, replayable, and, like, medium variance. And that's, that's pretty much it. Like, I'm not going to put it in, like, a genre or anything. That's about mm. it. Never in my life thought I would hear a comparison between Isaac and Magic the Gathering. It's, it's the same <laughs> game, basically. <laughs> Isaac is just a non-competitive Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering is an Isaac-like trading card game. It's basically true. Magic the Gathering is a roguelite. <laughs> <laughs> now, is Magic the Gathering a roguelite? Or next time. That's the headline, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my next video. It's not a true roguelite. It's only yeah, it's a... Not a ro Yo, shithead, this is not a roguelite. <laughs> it's not like games that are like rogue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How it's you, almost Bear? like things get redefined over time. No, that, do that doesn't make any sense. What is the perfect game to me? So I think I've uh, I think I've talked very briefly before about a game idea that I had when I was younger where I wanted to have a game that incorporated uh, different, different people in different uh, eras of time, but in order to play as the different people in the different eras, you had to insert a different disc. So like each era was on a disc, and it would be like a full-fledged game with discs that would all be different eras. That's a terrible idea, what? because it's extremely inconvenient, and I that was eight. <laughs> I'm so confused. Well, you can change that now with the Toys to Life mechanism. Yeah. I was no in discs, third grade when I had this written in my notebook, by the way, so I want a little bit of a pass on it. We've all had terrible young <laughs> child ideas. I hope we games. all had those terrible game ideas as kids. I had That's one be what brought us all where you together. played as a bunny on roller skates and fought vampires. That's fucking awesome. That's stupid. That's I'm pretty sure that game exists. Already. Yeah, that sounds like it's on green light right now. <laughs> exactly. Probably. So my my perfect game in my adult brain would be uh, would also have to do with time travel. I don't know if there's really been a game that deals with traveling in time and allows you to you know like have 
a good degree of freedom in altering yeah. a past that makes your future like you know noticeably and demonstrably different and can change the trajectory of different things. You want so like hard real to fable. Yeah, I pretty much want real fable. I want something that deals with time travel that puts you in positions where you can clearly make a difference for the future of whatever game world you're in and you know like have completely different experiences as a result of that. I Almost don't really have like a full-fledged idea for that, but that concept alone is so exciting to me that I I just yeah. I need that. I need that. I want to play that before I die. Something... Seriously, just go ask Peter Molyneux to just do Fable again. I'm sure he'll get it right the second time. I think he will. I, I'm totally with you, though. I mean, I, all the things they promised in Fable, if they pulled it off, would have been fantastic. I want to put... Technology just wasn't there at the I time. know. Yeah. We weren't nearly close enough. I don't think no the technology is ever going to be there for Paul, Peter Molyneux. No, yeah, No Man's man. Sky, though. Mm. It's got a release date. It's going to be that? real. It's happening. June, June is actually pretty close. Yeah, it's not that bad. People were saying it was going to be out in November for some reason. I don't know what happened the other day. It was just oh, like that's a rumor the, flying like, around. Every like fucking three. game. Yo, hold up. <laughs> Wouldn't it be sweet if it just came out? <laughs> HL3.txt? <laughs> <laughs> NMS.rtf. Oops. <laughs> Slip down. I found this at a floppy disk uh, left on the ground at the Sony convention. <laughs> the, uh, the Nine Inch Nails approach to marketing. It's just like an ASCII dick butt. <laughs> I would I would look into that, man. I would study look into every that dick part butt? of that what ASCII dick butt. They use a C instead of a D in this part of his dong. I wonder what that means. Break into the code. <laughs> <laughs> Call up Hackerman. Dot XLS. Okay, speaking of Hackerman, because I just said those words out loud. Have you guys seen Kung Fury? Not yet. It's I want to yet, no. I love It's it. on Netflix now. It's so, American okay. Netflix. That's oh, that's true. Okay, so sorry about that, but you have to watch it because it's probably the best thing I've ever seen. I will. But thank you, Stuart, for your question for Ask Roundtable. That is our description of our perfect games. I had a I had a lazy one, but I want it to happen. God that was damn it! Fine. Halo Five. Halo More Five. More people should email us questions too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roundtableyt at gmail dot com. If you got questions for us, we are happy to answer them. Roundtableyt. Yes. Want lots of them. Uh, and we want lots more Nick's Weird Games because Bear's Weird Games was a terrible replacement segment and we need you back fine. in our lives. I didn't get it, so you did fine. I had one game, though. I actually yep. had one game to use for Bear's Weird Games, so I'm really glad you, you didn't make me ready. do it for two it weeks. Like, <laughs> on deck. <laughs> was like, when Nick's not here, I'm going to be ready for this. I'm going to have my moment. <laughs> so we'll do Nick's Weird Games this time. And, uh, I, well, we got to have something good here because... You guys don't know it yet, but in about, in about 10 or 15 minutes, you'll know this is a very special episode. It's very significant. So this is, yeah. is going to mark the end of an era here. The end of the, I'll just say it, the end of the pre-recorded Nick's Weird Games theme songs. Because then we're going Not live. like we've ever done a second take of them. Yeah. No, yeah, right? we never have. <laughs> never, ever. Nick's Weird Games is always first ones to go. So what do you want, Mathis? What do you want to hear? Why not? You know, it's, it's like you said, it's the end of an era. We might as well use one of the, the most famous songs of our time, Drake's cell phone thing. That just came out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that song. is. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even know the name of the song. Drake's you just know the video exists. The one the meme is based off. Drake's of. Drake's what cell meme? phone video song. You've never seen the the memes. Have you haven't seen Drake, Drake memes. Meme, meme the dank Drake memes. Shit. Actually, it's called cell phone. You've never. No, it's called that. Hotline Bling. Hotline Bling. Okay. Bling, yes. The the dance one. Yeah, he's gone. Look, do you know a Drake song? I don't know any Drake songs. I don't either. You I'm sure you do. We're not hip. I don't with know any anymore. Drake songs. Falling apart, guys. We're gonna have to <laughs> I know the one that's like started from the bottom, now we're here. But then it's all I, I could do two lines. Is if freaking Nick's Weird Games has to be a little bit more, you know. All right, all right. Awesome in that. See, I'm glad you're starting to be a little bit more passionate about it. You're not willing to settle for some bullshit. Well, it's because I don't song. know it, you know. It's, it's just... <laughs> oh my god! Don't click that music video. Uh, how about a little bit of Michael McDonald? I don't know if I can do a Michael McDonald. You don't but think I, so? I can. I, I, the problem is I can do the voice. It's kind of like, Hoo! something like there. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I don't know any any songs that Michael McDonald sings. So. All right, I'm just going to get the game now. So, All right. We'll see. You. All right. I have it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. All right. Give me like, give me one line of Michael McDonald. That's all I want. 
I don't know. I don't know what framework to fill it in from. It's like I have the goo, but I don't have the mold. Okay. I know that feeling. You I just, need the goo and the mold. You just want to let the goo spill out and see if it fills into a mold then somewhere. Just be Michael McDonald going. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I kind of want that. There's weird games. Yeah. We can pretend yeah. that happened. Why don't you suggest? When Mathis's was a song that came out last week. Yeah. Yeah. Bears is the fucking interim singer for the Doobie Brothers from 34 years ago. Michael McDonald has clout, you ignoramus. Come on. He's not very popular in Canada. All right. I All right. Know check check this out. Global top 50 charts. This is what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> we got to find something on here. Okay. Global Drake top is just 50. straight up just... This all segment is not this long. <laughs> all he does is dance in a box. That's all he's doing is dancing in a box. All I'm, I'm Drake does these. is dance in a box. That's okay. all he's ever done. I know. Um, Adam Levine. Which, which one? Which song is it? Maroon 5. Yeah, but what's the... Oh, what's the, the uh, you want to know the actual song. Okay. Well, you're looking at a chart. So yeah, I'm just looking at the charts. It's, uh, it's Locked Away featuring... Or no, it's Our City featuring Adam Levine. So we got to go with an actual Maroon 5 song. I don't know that one. All right. The most popular recent Maroon 5 song is Sugar. I can't sing that, man. Man. All right, let's go with something old. She will be loved for next week. No, I mean, you want to take a mulligan for today? <laughs> I mean, I, you're, when it's like something within the vicinity of my, my voice, it's doable. Uh, Setting me up for Adam Levine is just a disaster. No, I, I, I can accept Adam Levine at an octave lower for next Weird Games theme song. Well, then it's just like, you know, it's not good. Man. That's right. not Adam Levine. Right. That's Adam fucking Monday. I got a PlayStation That's 1 okay. game for you today. <laughs> Nick, this isn't just... about you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you think this game, this segment is called Nick's Weird Games? No, it's called Ryan's Weird Theme Songs. Unbelievable. I don't know any of these songs. <laughs> <laughs> he actually I'm just, just listening left. to Hotline Bling right now. That's all I'm doing. Oh, man. All right, dude. Tell you what. Have we done Rush yet? We did, didn't we? I think we did. We did. I don't. I don't know the extent of your musical taste beyond Rush. I think that's all I. That's all I've ever We've heard. We've done the Police. We've done Rush. What's your favorite band besides Rush? Probably Rush. Can we do like Damn Bohemian it. Rhapsody by Queen. Can you do that? I think we might have done that already, but I can. I can oh, give that a try. No, I think we. I don't think we've done that one yet. All right. So that all would right. be. There like, we go. Yeah. We found something. Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Just let me. Normally, it's better when it comes off the top of the dome piece, but I got. I got a little bit inside right. of myself. We have so to I sing to bring Nick back, I, so this has I, to I'm happen. Aware. He's gone. He left. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it for Jaguar? Is it for PS3? Yes. Published in Japan. Came to US in 2003. <laughs> Open Google Chrome. <laughs> Put in the details and see. Mm -hmm. It's just a weird game, probably an action RPG, published <laughs> by Tecmo Koei Dynasty <laughs> Heroes 3. <laughs> anyway, the wind blows. Publisher's been defunct for weeks. Four weeks. There you go. That was fantastic. That was that was actually really. You good. know what? I'm we actually had... really happy that that took that long because I'm glad we waited. That was worth it. It was a significant build up for a really good payoff. It was yeah, really great. Good payoff. All right. Thank you, that Nick. What do you good. got? All right. Today we're doing a PS1 game. This is based okay. on from you last week. Uh, you kind of inspired me to look okay. at another segment of my catalog. Um, on the scale of difficulty, I'd say this is pretty up there. Uh, last week we had one that was, or week before last was pretty easy. Phantom Dust. This is uh, this is down in the depths again. Mm. Uh, so PlayStation <laughs> One game developed by Art Dink. Anybody ever heard of them? <laughs> what? Art to say Dink? it again. Spell it. Art A R T D I N K. Art wow. Dink. All right. Art Dink. Uh, published by Dink? Art Dink in Japan and SCEA in North America. Okay. Came out in 1997. In North America. I feel like if I don't know Art Dink, I don't know this game. <laughs> I think I've already lost. Might be the case. And, well, if you Googled it, you probably found it instantly. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they've made very much. Uh, it's an action role-playing game, and it is single-player. I'm going to read a couple things from the back. I it. Action if you, RPG? Mm -hmm. If you have a chance at getting it, you'll probably get it, because the back is fairly descriptive. Okay. Enter a free-spirited world where instincts and survival rule. 
Hunt, gather, and kill in a prehistoric land where man is animal and the mammoth is king. Here you begin your quest. Hunt and explore a vast wilderness of mountains, tundra, and deserts. Discover mystic runes, hidden caves, and many other curious finds. Experience real-time weather conditions as you roam, eat, sleep, age, and die. Endure attacks from fierce saber-toothed tigers, eagles, and other wildlife. Evolve a unique tribe of over 100 members. This is... I think I know this game. This is Sun... Su Tale of the Sun? Sun... Ding, oh. ding, ding, ding! Oh, wow. Wow. Holy, Holy shit! Holy shit! Well done! Tale of the Sun! That's... Yes! Oh, wow. that game is fucking weird, man! That game is weird <laughs> as hell. It really this is. is. Good Nick's Dude. weird game, then. Look at this Props fucking... Props to you, Mathis, for getting that. That's Damn. a weird one. Image search, Tale of the Sun. And it's T-A-I-L, by the way. Tale yes. of the Sun. And then yeah. look at the fucking bird man walking yeah, towards yeah, yeah. the camera. Oh, no, this game God. is well oh, known for eyes, its bizarreness, man. actually, which is, I think, why I needed to play this one up for this. Mm -hmm. You get, like, Arts yeah, it's think. really fucking bizarre. What the fuck have these? How did you? Made? When did you play Tale of the Sun, Mathis? So long story. I actually never played Tale of the Sun. Um, <laughs> back when Let's Plays were something I was still kind of getting into, mm. like not recording. A Game Informer did a full Let's Play of this game. Oh, uh, many yes. years ago, like maybe four or five years ago, uh, and it was one of the most hilarious things I've ever watched. Right. Um, Dan Reichert was the one that played through it. Uh, it was so funny. It was. It's weird. It's so weird. It's, it's apparently got some great uh, Wikipedia stubs that come off of it. Like, for example, prehistoric people in popular culture. This is one <laughs> that I will spend some time <laughs> perusing at my own leisure. That's good. Apparently, it's on PlayStation Network now as That's a PS1 Japan. classic. Like, all the art that I'm looking at is all like fan art from the Let's Play. Yeah. Man, that is awesome. We Feels got like... a point. That's fantastic. Yeah. I can't believe it. I think it. Your third point so far out of what is this twenty episodes? Yeah, yeah. something like that. So this will be that. episode nineteen, actually. So that's going to be a terrific natural segue into the big announcement. Oh, oh! Where is it? Where did I put it? What's the big announcement? Barry? There it is. It's roundtable live. Woo! Woo! Yeah! I don't see anything. You don't see anything. It's, it's all on my end. Roundtable Live, everybody. This is the big announcement. It's episode 19 and going into episode 20, which will be taking place next Tuesday, which is three days from when you're hearing this if you're listening to this episode the day it goes up. Or, uh, sorry, four days. I don't understand weekends. Uh, the 3rd of November, the Tuesday, we, we will be live doing the podcast, not just doing the stream, but doing the actual podcast proper on the uh, Roundtable Podcast Twitch channel. And that will be happening every single week from this point forward. So the round or the uh, roundtable podcast is going weekly. It's happening, even without the Patreon goal. We just decided, fuck it, we're gonna do yeah. it yeah, because basically. it's gonna the be streams, better. The streams suck. <laughs> <laughs> They don't suck. So we might as well do more podcasts. No, no, no. We, uh, we, we all collectively decided that it was uh, it would be uh, a fun shift. I think the podcast needed uh, a new a new life. So we're breathing it into it by way of Twitch. So With that's going to that be happening now. Changes at Patreon obviously will happen. Mm -hmm. I think we've just collectively decided to drop the $75 tier altogether. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll just leave the $50 tier and below as it is, I, I believe. Um if any major changes come into it, you'll obviously, everybody, you'll all get an announcement to let you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, those of you who are in the $75 tier, we're working on uh, ways to, you know, sort of provide an equal value thing for that contribution. We very much thank those of you who have been supporters on Patreon this entire yeah. time. It's been a Thanks, long guys. time now. It's been like eight months that we've been doing this show. So to be on Patreon for that long or for any period of time in that span, we want to say thank you very much for that. The Patreon page, again, will still be going on. Uh, the Twitch page will have subscriptions enabled as well with a few uh, custom emotes and uh, uh, some other stuff. I, I don't know exactly what's going on with that right now, but I'll figure it out by the time we have the show going on. And uh, we got all kinds of new artwork, all sorts of new fun stuff, and we'll be bringing more guests on as well to do the show live with us because that's always fun too. But uh, yeah, Roundtable Live, it's totally a thing, it's totally happening. It'll be every Tuesday, ideally around 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, will be the start time for that, much like the streams were every other Tuesday over there as well. And uh, that's it, that's the big announcement, so hope you're excited for that, because we are. And uh, that is also going to do it for the show today. Yeah! Yeah! I'm still not an Overwatch. Oh man, we took the entire podcast and you still didn't get your email, huh? I know, I'm very mad about that's it. That's a bummer. 
Oh, man. Follow us over on Twitter, at RoundTablePC. Thank you or very much. don't. See if I care. Whoa, hey, man. Don't be so goddamn... Yo, that pizza place probably has the most successful tweet they've ever had. <laughs> How many retweets does it have now? Uh, it has 40 oh my God. tweets and 30 favorites. Yeah. Ryan follows them now, so now obviously I'm not the biggest person to follow him. <laughs> Ryan decided to uh, As soon as he up. heard you and say it, that, it's just like instantly. Why wouldn't I follow them? And, I if, and, if you, and if they follow you before they follow me, I'm going to be mad. This pizza <laughs> looks pretty fucking good, man. You yeah, but they only have the one location. They can deliver. You can have Mathis <laughs> deliver it to you. I, this broccoli pizza, though, I don't know, man. Broccoli on pizza, it's it's not awful, but it's is not it, good is either. Is it soft or is it uh, does it firm? Not softens. It's like, well, I guess it depends on. I don't really like soft broccoli. Really? Like it's, I mean, I like broccoli. I don't really like soft broccoli. I like it to have a little little crispness. All right. I, I want nice to imagine I'm biting into a little tree. <laughs> like I'm a fucking giant. Then your me. your parents did that to you when you were younger, right? They told you like you're a dinosaur. You got to bite the, the leaves I, off your tree. I literally don't think I ate broccoli until I was like 17 or 18. Really? Yeah. yeah. Broccoli has one been my favorite vegetable. For broccoli is dope. Why is broccoli the one that gets the bad rap? Oh, cauliflower you... is fucking disgusting. That's cauliflower, the one that be. I find gross. Yeah. yeah. Really? I like cauliflower. Brussels sprouts are fucking delicious, too. You're off yeah. the show. Thank you very much for our Patreon supporters of this show. It's going to be Max Pilling, Christopher Flagg, Positron, Alexander Spillman, Jeff Ross, Jonathan Graham, Julian Abelsgard, Kevin Berklin, Matt, David Bradley, Air Force Balls, Christopher Farmer, General Crunk, Casey, Zur, Simph, Kevin, Chloe, hashtag Chloe deserve better Walker. Is that a Life is Strange reference? Mm, I don't know. Or maybe like a Chloe Kardashian. Is she a person? Yeah, it's probably it's a Chloe Kardashian. <laughs> 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 Ignacio0891, Brizzle Brip, Justin, Logan Ray, Samurfet, Matthew Monahan, Adam Savage's Blowhole. I'm still really happy that one's up there. Johannes Goldon, Mediocrities, Null Ref, and Myth Scarab. Thank you guys so much for maintaining your support again over on the Patreon page. That uh, tier, by the way, the, the folks that are wondering whether or not they're going to keep getting the shout-out videos and the personalized thank you videos and that sort of stuff, actually planning on incorporating that sort of into the Twitch stream as well, so uh, be on the lookout for that. And uh, that, I believe, is it. Roundtable subreddit, roundtablepodcast.reddit.com to submit uh, feedback for the show in any way, shape, or form. Also, feel free to rate the show on iTunes because iTunes is still a thing that we really love for you to use. Five stars on iTunes does go a long way. Thank you very much for that support as well. And thank you for watching the show, and we'll see you live on Tuesday. Twitch.tv slash roundtablepodcast. Bye. When the hotline bling.